Hello, welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video, I'm once again taking a look at one of your designs that you have linked me in the comment section of one of my videos. And if you wish to see something of yours shown on this channel, just leave me the Steam Workshop link somewhere and I'll eventually get round to it. But for today, we are looking at a transport ship that's capable of taking you from the surface of our planet into orbit and of course all the way over to asteroids to try and search for some precious resources. This is the Skuwif Medium Surface to Orbit Transport, which is this lovely thing right here. So this is a very nice ship that features a small lopsided interior, and on one side we've got everything we need to produce all the hydrogen to get out of our planet. Pressing F10 and finding it in the spawn menu, there it is. This thing is 1,440 small blocks, using the Wasteland DLC pack and the Decorative Block number 2 DLC pack. It uses no mods and has got no scripts, but it does feature a programmable block that you can set up yourself if you want something on it. So I'll give this a thumbs up and as per usual, all the information about it is on the Steam Workshop page right here. So what we're going to do is have a very quick look around the outside, then we'll have a quick look at the interior then we can see how well it can handle getting into orbit with the deadly re-entry mod turned on. So, getting my character out of the way, please bugger off, thank you. All the way at the very front here, this is what we get. So we've got a lovely glass cockpit where we can view inside at our transparent LCD screen showing us our artificial horizon and of course our speed. We have a camera just below that to make sure we can get a good view forwards with a spotlight just below that to light up the darkness and it's very useful when searching through asteroids. If you were to come all the way over to this section, this is the front of our hydrogen generation area. We've got ourselves a connector, which is going to be very easy to connect up thanks to our lopsided cockpit. It means we don't have to use any kind of fiddly cameras, we can just peer slightly to the right to be able to dock this up all nicely. Yes, yeah, surrounding that we've got some spotlights to help light up in the darkness. We've got some hydrogen thrusters on the top and the bottom, as well as some ion thrusters to help us out in space on the left and right hand side. Surrounding all of this, we've got some lovely blue and grey blocks that makes the majority of the ship all the way around the outside. As we were to move around the side of this section right here, we can see some landing gears at the bottom, which do have some pistons attached onto them to make sure you can land anywhere, especially if the terrain is uneven. And as we continue along the side here, more hydrogen thrusters, more ion thrusters, a few barred window blocks for some additional decoration. As we continue all the way along here towards the very back, what we're going to see is two large ion thrusters, one large hydrogen thrusters, and two small hydrogen thrusters to push us around. Then if we were to come to the back of the passenger area, this is what we get over here. So we've got a piston head, an LCD screen, and additional ion thruster to help on our left and right. If you were to drop down and come underneath this thing, what we're going to see is all of our landing gears where each of them have a piston attached onto them, some more hydrogen thrusters, some more ion thrusters, the Ganning turret to make sure we are well defended while in space. We've got an ore detector right next to our Ganning turret to make sure we can go off and find precious resources if we need to. And continue along towards the back there, another connector with a camera setup, and then there is the very front. Coming all the way up and above, this is what we get on the very top, so we can peer straight down at our driving seat. And on the opposite side, more thrusters, a parachute hatch just in case we needed, a second Gatling gun to make sure we are well defended, and then going towards the back of the ship. There we go. And then grabbing hold of my character, walking up to this side, because this is where we're going next, we've got ourselves a ramp on a hinge and two buttons. So pressing this button right here is going to deploy the ramp all the way to the ground, then we've got another button there, which is going to be for the door. So there we go, we now walk up to this very nicely. No need to jump up, we can simply just clamp onto it. We can press that button, open that up, and now we can get onto the inside. Pressing this button right here is going to do both the ramp and the door together. So doing that, the door is now closed, and then peering out the window, we can see that slowly raise up and seal us inside. Looking towards the back of the room, this is what we get. Then turning around towards the front, there we go. Yes, at the back we've got ourselves a lone seat with a programmable block sitting in front of that. Programmable block has nothing going on with it, so if you did want to add something yourself, you can do. 
Yes, we've got another button there, which is for the lights, which has been clearly labeled. And then we've got some time blocks with a cargo container right next to it. So we just drop down there and add a few things in here if we want to, like an emergency gun and some ammunition. And over to here, open that up. That's our medium cargo container where we can store some ice in that can be pumped into our O2H2 generators. We had to turn towards the front. We've got a second seat for another passenger. We then got a small LCD screen telling us our weather and an air vent to make sure we don't suffocate while inside here. Looking up, we've got another access point, which is for our parachute hatch, which does come with a canvas ready inside it, which is very nice stuff. And moving towards the front there, you can just look around there. There's another block, which is our remote control block. And then crouching around it towards the front and getting into the seat. In first person view, this is what we get. So we've got a fantastic view all the way around us, and we can clearly see our connector on the opposite side, which is great for docking this thing up. And then looking down here, we can see our time, we can see our hydrogen and power usage, and of course our artificial horizon. Bring up the HUD, this is what we get. Number one, two, and three is for our cameras all the way around the ship. So number one is right at the very front on our glass piece. Number two is straight underneath next to our connector. Number three is next to the cockpit to allow us to get a secondary view forwards. And four and five is for our turrets on the top and the bottom. So here's the top one. And then here is the bottom one. Number six is for our pistons next to our landing gear. So just undoing that with number seven, then pressing number six, we can raise it all the way up, which is very nice when trying to land on uneven surfaces. Dropping that all the way down again. There we go. Number seven is simply to toggle the lock on and off. And number eight and nine is for our connectors at the front and the bottom. On tab number two, this is our power and general usage, where we've got number one for our hydrogen engine on and off. 2, 3, and 4, and 5 is for our batteries to auto and recharge. Number 6 is for our antenna on and off. Number 7 for our ore detector on and off. Number 8 for our O2H2 generators. And number 9 for manual control over our parachutes. On tab number 3, we then got our hydrogen tanks to stockpile on and off. That is the same on 2 and 3 for the small versions. Number 4 and number 5 is for our thrusters. Number 4 is for the hydrogen thrusters all the way around the ship. And number 5 is for our ion thrusters around the ship. So there we go. Number six is for our gyroscope on and off. Number seven is for our cruise control for our ion thrusters. So we'll simply turn off the ones at the front. There we are. And number eight and nine is for our thruster override for our hydrogen thrusters. Coming to tab number four, this is just our lights and LCD screens. When number one, it's going to be to turn on and off our spotlights at the front. Number two, it's going to be for the lights at the bottom of the ship next to our landing gear. All the way down to here. And finding where is the lights? There they are, right there. So turning them on and off. There we go. Just makes it easier to view that camera when we're trying to dock up on our bottom connector. Number three and number four is for our transparent LCD screens. So we can just toggle them on and off as we please. And number five is for our mask controls for the door and the hinge. There we go. That can come all the way down and it will just open up the door. Pressing it again will just reverse everything back up. And now we're ready to take off and go to space. So that is that for the hot bar. What we're going to do is quickly come off the ground. We'll do a thruster test and then it's time to try and go to space with a deadly re-entry mod. Where if we go too fast, we're going to be torn to shreds and left into little pieces. Yes, moving forwards, this is what we get. We've got some quite nice speed thanks to our hydrogen thrusters. Coming to a stop, we appear to be equally as good and doesn't take too long to come to a stop. Moving left. And moving right, we've got some nice speed with that, very responsive controls. Moving down, some great speed with that, and moving up, even better. We're looking my mouse around, this is what we get. There is very, very little weight on here, so it is quite floaty, but it does suit this size of ship and what it's trying to portray. So what we can do now is, of course, well, we're going to go to space. So pressing spacebar, what we're going to do is now just start to head all the way up. I've turned off the notifications for the deadly re-entry mod, so we're simply going to get very, very hot as we try to get to space. Now, I think it's probably going to be best if I actually use the bottom thrusters to go up, because I think they are a little bit more efficient, but it's still more fun just to fly like that. So off we go at some nice speeds. We are getting to 45 meters per second. I do think maybe it is slightly better to do it like that. Use them both together all the way up. In fact, we can just use the bottom ones like so. They seem to be a bit better overall, like I said. So let's just try and balance ourselves out and we'll get to space. 
And here we go, we are still going all the way up. I think the Ion Thrusters have finally kicked in. I think we're at the right spot where they can actually activate. Can't actually read the bottom of the screen where our planetary gravity is. But we suddenly shot up in speed. We haven't started to burn up yet, which is kind of surprising. I was kind of hoping that we would, well, just sort of burn up before we get into space. Here we are, we are 72 meters per second. I think we're just going to go straight there. We are at... 80% of our hydrogen and it's slowly very slowly ticking down which is very good to see and we see our power is also going down and here we go wow we are suddenly going up with lots of speed there turning off our hydrogen engines but that should help with our power that should help with our hydrogen usage and away we go we are sort of wobbling I'm not sure why I'm being so affected by wind up here we can see the well, we can see the actual atmosphere around us Although despite not actually leaving the planetary gravity, we are slowly getting there. And as you can see from the hydrogen usage, we are, well, nowhere near empty. And we can easily get back down to the planet and back to space again without needing to recharge this thing. So the final thing to do, I think, is to simply turn off our thrusters. So coming over to here, we're now going to turn this off. In fact, we'll turn them back on for the moment. And what? We'll, oh god, there goes some of the ship we shouldn't have turned so fast. We're just going to turn that on and we're going to come back down to the planet where hopefully we'll just end up in a fireball which was my original intentions and that will be that oh here we go we are now burning up into the atmosphere wow the, te the temperature we're past 200 it is going up massively we're slowly boring away the ship look at that go look at all the particle effect that is absolutely insane oh god we are now burning into little piece i can't see anything I can just hear the blocks getting destroyed. Let me out! Oh my god, look at that. That is just being torn into little pieces. We are spreading into tiny little parts. There goes the remainder of the ship all the way down to there. But that is what I was hoping to happen when we were taking off. And that is the full force of the deadly re-entry mod. And there is absolutely nothing remaining of the Skuif medium surface to orbit transport ship. But yes, anyway, that is a fantastic little ship to play around with if you are looking for something very efficient to get to space from a planet. As you saw from me just messing around there, we used barely any hydrogen getting into space. And by the time we got into, well, by the time we got torn into little pieces, we were basically fully recharged. So there'll be a link to it in the description below if you do wish to download and play around with it yourself. I highly recommend you do. And I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye bye.